Japanese. <laughs> Hello, my name is Earl Loreto, and you're listening to K-I-L-L Dead Air Radio, and I'm your host. Tonight, we're going to listen to some people whose minds are open. Now, let's hear our first guest. What's on your almost perfect mind? for like one song, you know, you hear one song on the radio, you hear one song on MTV back when they played music on MTV. And I would always buy an album for that one song and then I'm listening to it and I always find something better. I always find something twice as good as that one song they released. And then sometimes, you know, later on down the road, they will, they will release that song. But other times they never release a really good song. And I'm always like wondering, like, why? Why don't they release that one song that I love? Maybe I'm the only one that loves it. I don't know. I've always been that way. You know, I always search out new, unusual things, music, movies. So I find some of the things I'm into. That's why I'm such a fan of some of the things I'm a fan of. Like uh, Todd Snyder. It's like no one's hardly heard of. Every time I meet people and I try to introduce them to his music, it's just one of those things. Only artists I've seen twice live, I'd see him again. He's amazing. He's a storyteller. He's funny. And he makes real simple music that I just love. And, you know, a lot of it kind of like makes me think of me a lot. So. <clears throat> And that's how I find things like Letterkenny, which is another show. It's a show that I just fell in love with. And anytime I talk to people about what they're watching or someone else talks to me about, you know, this show or that show, I always, like, try to talk about Letterkenny and try to spread the word. It's like this little Canadian comedy show that's on Hulu now. And it's just... I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's really quick, it's really smart. They use a lot of words. I've always been a big fan of words, especially with comedy. I mean, my favorite stand-up comedian of all time is George Carlin. And if you know anything about George Carlin, you know that he loved words. And I just love people that can play with words and just make things funny by just talking like normal, not, not setting up a joke, just talking and being funny. And all these characters in Letterkenny are like, I don't know, they're just unique and unusual and they are not what you expect. There's guys that like work in the field all on a farm, but they freaking talk like almost like they're Shakespearean or something or just but then it's also absurd and there's stereotypes and it's just it's still funny though and it's not stereotype not stereotypes that are like rude just stereotypes like like the hicks are one way and the skids which are like the freaking meth heads are another way and hockey players are a certain way but it's not like you know, they're very inclusive. Cast has a lot of, like, native people and... Which is, like, really cool because I'm part native, so then I always look for things like that. And that's how I found Reservation Dogs, which is another great show. And that, that cast is almost like, I think it's like 99% native. 
cast and the crew included. I mean, they've had they had guest people like Mark Marin is in an episode and some other people, but most of the cast is all native. And it's just kids living on a reservation, just trying to fucking live, survive as kids and, you know, 20, 20, whatever, in a freaking reservation. And I want to say it was in Oklahoma, somewhere, you know, Midwest. And they are trying, the whole premise is uh, one of their friends committed suicide and his dream was to go to California. So they all still decide they're gonna make the California trip in his honor. And this, you know, shit happens that, you know, life happens. It's a really great show. People should check it out. I think it only went like three seasons and that's it. And that's all there's gonna be, which is kind of sad, but you know, I like, whoops, I like, they're following like the British model of TV. You know, British shows, they don't go for 15, 20 seasons. They go for like three or four and that's it. And they go in with that in mind. Like we're just gonna do, say, three seasons. So then we're gonna have a beginning, the middle, and the end. And that's it. And they follow through and it's great. And I think sometimes it's better to have something like that than some series that go on and on and on and after a while lose traction and after a while usually nine times out of ten well maybe eight times out of ten and poorly you know i mean to this day i've never seen an episode of lost strictly for the fact that from what i hear the ending was questionable to some people some of the fans liked it some of the fans didn't like it so i don't know if i want to invest time for an ending that I might not like. I mean, I may love it, but who knows? You know? It's just one of them things. It's like... Game of Thrones. I've watched a single episode. Didn't care for it. Not my thing. So, that's it. You know? Like, I understand. There's, like, so many people love it. I don't think I'll ever watch it. Maybe. I don't know. I like to think I got some time left in my life to watch things, but... You know, I don't need to watch everything. You know, sometimes that one thing that everybody thinks is great is like not my bag of tea. Is that the right thing? Bag of tea? Sounds good. And a cup of tea. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Oh, series. Like, as much as I loved Heroes, Man, that last season was rough. Ended poorly. But, you know, I still own them all on DVD or Blu-ray. And every once in a while, I'll watch them again. I'll tell you, that very first season was amazing. I remember watching it when it was on TV. You know? And, like, I fell in love with The Walking Dead from the very first episode, the very first scene. You know, I was like, when he shot that little girl zombie, as crazy as that is, I'm like, holy shit, they shoot a kid? The first scene, the first episode? A kid. The show will do, you know, and then whatever it wants. It'll push the envelope. And they got away with some, some crazy stuff in that show. And they were one of the first shows to push the language barrier, having uh, some foul language laws was on at a certain time of night. I got away with more of that. I know that's not a, like a feather in your cap or something, but it kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cool. When you're dealing with a show like that, you shouldn't have, like, limitations. They never show much limitations with the violence. They never show that much limitations with the sex. So I might as well not show limitations with the language as well. Fuck it. Do it. You know, and that's kind of cool. <clears throat> I can remember I was there right in the beginning. The very, you know, it was, it was one of those shows that like I discovered right out, right from the bat, season one, episode one. Saw promo, so I'm gonna check it out. Made sure I watched it. Fell in love. Stuck with it through all 15 seasons, I think it was, whatever it was, 14 seasons. You 
about it end great. I liked how it ended because they didn't do really anything much special than any other episode, and I think that's kind of cooler. A lot of times they try like try too hard that final episode to make it like a big deal, and I think it's just cool to just have it end just like any other episode. Some people live, some people die. And, Someone important die. That usually happens, but that would happen at the you know any given moment. You know, I mean, like some of them were special, like you know, uh, Glenn and that uh, redheaded guy. What the fuck was his name? They get killed by Negan right there, the first episode of a new season. Big explosion, a big way over the season. But then when like Carl died, he like died like right now, like uh, just uh, every uh, any just like an everyday episode, in the middle of the season. It wasn't like a finale. It wasn't like the opening. I don't even think it was like a mid-season finale or anything. Just random episode. So you never know. I don't know. I'm rambling. I think maybe I should go inside and give me something to eat. Well, that was deep, very deep, deeper than most of our callers. <laughs> He'd really opened his mind, that one. Well, I think that's quite enough for this session. Now, for those of you listening that might want to tell us what's on your old most perfect mind, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Or shoot us an email at bonsai74 at gmail.com and we'll arrange a recording session. Thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful, wonderful night. And remember, keep an open mind.